the distant shores of silence begin at the door. You cannot fly there like a bird. You must stop, look deeper, still deeper, until nothing deflects the soul from the deep most deep. No greenery can now satisfy your sight. The captive eyes will not come home. And you thought life would hide you from the other life that overhangs the depths. You must know there is no return from this flow, this embrace within the mysterious beauty of eternity. Only endure, endure. Do not interrupt the flight of shadows. Only endure clear and simple, more and more. We had no expectations on our way to Kazakhstan, except one unique desire, to give our lives and faithfully serve the church here in our calling. This local church captivated us. We were greatly moved that this was a church of the Acts of the Apostles, a church of the first Christians, a church that was, in a sense, emerging from the catacombs. We, in effect, live as one family, though we are scattered throughout a diocese twice the size of Poland. We looked at Asia, Central Asia, with big eyes. What is it? Space, space, space. The steps charmed us in their variety, how they vary from region to region, space and silence. We came to Kazakhstan exactly a year ago, from the Carmel of God the Merciful in Częstochowa. We of course arrived on the invitation of the Archbishop Thomas Petha, of the Archdiocese of the Blessed Virgin Mary in Astana, here in Kazakhstan. I lived in Częstochowa for 41 years. I had been thinking about going east. It must have been 10 years earlier. When we arrived here in Ozhurna, I went inside the church and I experienced something during prayer, as if a confirmation that the Mother of God wanted us here. She quite simply wants us here by her side. The decision to go to Kazakhstan was in response to a calling, an appeal of Archbishop Thomas Petha, who had visited us for three years before our arrival. His words deeply ingrained themselves on my memory. Sisters, do not be afraid of Kazakhstan. Do not be afraid of Kazakhstan. Come. We were afraid of the climate. Would we succeed in adapting to the cold, the winters, the snowstorms, the summer heat waves with temperatures of over 40 degrees, sometimes even more, incredible scorching heat. In winter, frosts also up to minus 40 degrees. Winds are very, very annoying. Coming here from Europe entailed a certain culture shock, the need to shift and adapt to a more Spartan existence. Water is short, and what there is, is salty. At the beginning, we had to bring water from a well. We now have piped water supplying the homes. But the arrangement only works in the summer. During the winter, all the pipes freeze, burst, and that means we have to go back to carrying water from the well. Saving water is unimaginably important. 
Every drop is worth its weight in gold. On the other hand, they cut off the electricity supply again and again. Especially when the wind is strong and a storm is brewing, a life uniquely by candlelight. This house was given to us by the descendants of Polish exiles. It was the first prayer house during the times of the regime. Inhabitants of Ojourne used to gather here secretly for prayer. The first Polish priest also lived later in this house. We came to a house that had not been used in many years, so everything was here, including, for example, tenant mice. Two sisters slept on the veranda to begin with, an unheated veranda, but not to worry. The harder it was, the gladder we were. Meeting the people of Ojona was our first meeting with Poles, glad to hear the Polish language once more and keen not to speak Russian with us. We will not gavarit paruski, chat in Russian with you. We want to talk to you in Polish. For them, Ojona is like a miniature Warsaw. Just as some villages are German, so here the majority of people are Polish exiles sent from the Ukraine. They exude the eastern expansiveness of goodwill and openness. They received us just like their own, and they look after us just like their family. They taught us about life from the beginning, how to live in Central Asia, how to prepare for winter. For example, that potatoes have to be dug up earlier to ensure they do not freeze. Simply, step by step, just like parents teach their children how to live. So they took care of us, they watched over us, and introduced us to the realities of surviving in that climate under those conditions. Moreover, as one lady put it, even if the snow inundates you, no matter, we will come and dig you out. Or neighbors, the other side of the potato field. Come to my garden if you need something. Please, help yourself. There is enough for both of us. Sometimes she brings us milk, such that the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. Discreetly laid at our door, absolutely without charge. The goodness of these people moves us greatly. How God looks after us in the smallest details of life. <laughs> she is our convent's founder, so a person especially close to our hearts. In fact, a neighbor who is a real mother to us. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We experience such signs of God's love every day, countless times. This land is a land of martyrdom whilst at the same time a land of real God's miracles. These people really take great care of us.